And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to all the fowl of the hair and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. Don't marry who you should name. There are people that will come to your life, they should only be named. Bestie. That's the name. Mm. What's the name? Bestie. Um, there are other names. But anyways, the Bible said God brought different creatures. Marry a person, not a creature. Sometimes when we are so much in a hurry, you will not see the identity of the person you want to do life with. And you just move ahead. And these are the things that causes lots of dysfunctionalities. So, let's read verse 20 again. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the hare and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took of his ribs and closed the flesh instead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And there, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Verse 25, which is the part men of our ideologies fight. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Naked means complete, complete vulnerability, complete openness. And the Bible said they were not what? Ashamed. So, there are many quotes that we, we may possibly miss when we read Genesis 2. The first thing there was that God said, it is not good, not for man to be alone. It is not good for the man to be alone. So, whatever it was that was God's idea of not being alone, it was about a specific man. There are people that should still be alone until they become the man. So, that definite article there shows that God was particular about a quality of man. And to understand that, we need to know where God was speaking from. So look at it. Let's go upward. Genesis chapter number 2, same scripture. Now let's go to verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So this man, one quality we are seeing is that is the man God formed. Number two is the man God released his own breath into his nostrils. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And yeah. Verse 15 now. The Bible says, And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God put the man in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The word Eden means the presence. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now verse 18. And the Lord said, It is not good that the man, this man, 
dwelling in my presence, carrying my bread that has my assignment. This kind of man should not be alone. If any of these components is missing, the fellow should find it first. The idea of getting a life partner is to get, a, get an help meet, not somebody who helps you find purpose. So I tell people, until you know your purpose, you are not eligible to propose. You can't know who should help you until you know the task. One of the cause of pain in many homes is that people are getting married and the wife is trying to help the person she should help fulfill. She's trying to help him find the purpose, which is contrary to design. When something is contrary to the design, it is a dysfunction. It won't function well. Are you with me? Okay. Let's talk. Two things I want to talk about. Number one. And I say this from loads of research. If you are seeing a man seated beside you in church today, it is a clear sign that God is winning. Let's celebrate the males. I know some of you are saying, bring it on, bring it on. We know you are coming. Hold on. But I have observed that when you call for meetings, at least 65 to 70 percent are women. It doesn't matter what your intention is as touching building. If the man that should be the foundation is compromised, you can't build well. You can't build well. Thank God for the men we have seated, but most men don't read books on relationship and marriage. Most men don't attend those seminars. An average man feels, why should a man like myself talk to me about my home? Say, a pastor would like to see you. A man like me. So the ego that we have that should be used for the purpose of protecting our territories is now deflecting knowledge. Okay? And apologies. We, 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 the, the, we, are, see, we are having issues. First, go and check global statistics. At least three to four out of every five children they give birth to in the hospital are females. I'm telling you the fact. Go and Google it and make sure your source is correct. Then the remaining 25% to 30%, we are now having microscopic few among those ones who are really availing themselves to the demand. I feel the male gender is under attack. And it's time to strengthen that cord and have the original design of God from the beginning. From the beginning. It's not a crime. It doesn't make you less of a man that you are when you need help as a man. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you less of a man when you are led to have leadership. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you less of the man that you are when you are being prayed for. It doesn't make you less. It just shows that you are a man under authority. And that's the person qualified to wield it. Doesn't make you less. Jesus had 12 guys following him. Didn't make them any less. Sometimes maybe it's your wife that said, Can we attend our church? This, this church I want to attend. It doesn't make you less of a man to say, Let's get, let's go, let's check it out. We must go back to the original template. We must go back. If we can get all right, the both sides right, we'll get families right. Okay? And we're having many ministries um, to the female gender, to the girl child, 
to this. We are leaving the boys behind. And it will work. If we continue with this template, we're going to have many girls who are advanced, intelligent, smart, spiritual, but there's no man. Not because there are no males, but the man is not available. Many girls are single can tell you there are males around, but you look at them and name them. You call them what they are. You are not the man. Amen. So we have to understand this. And understand that when we avail ourselves to the process of preparation for aspect of our lives, to sit with your right wife and read books on parenting and study together, it doesn't make you less of the man that you are. It rather shows your quality of humility. It shows how, how much you are willing to go for the sake of your home. It shows your children that their father is not the most high. When you learn to say, I'm sorry, even to your children, I'm sorry. Well, our ego won't let us. Even me, except one time I rebuke somebody, I, I type, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't know this. As I type it, my ego said, no, you can't do that. So I don't agree, I can't do that. Thing. I just said the message, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm reporting myself. <laughs> Amen. We're going somewhere. Actually, the marriage of, of Adam and Eve, you know, there was no wedding. Oh, you forgotten. Adam and Eve, there was no wedding. No. The parental concept they got was God. When they said, yes, I do, yes, I do, we don't know. Adam, the, their marriage is not the ideal marriage. Adam didn't have ex. Eve too didn't have ex. Nobody has tried to rape her before. Not the gorillas and the baboons. So they were both pure breed. Plain template. Coming together. So what, I'm not saying they are not the ideal template. I say, I'm trying to say that. They do not mirror our current day reality. Mm. They do not. Okay. Maybe somebody is seated here and all the people that have come to your life from day one, wrong, caused many pain. And your parents seem to like one of them. But now this is somebody. They don't know him. And they are saying no. Maybe because of his state of origin. And you are here saying we will fight it till the end. I will stand my ground. When you are convinced that this is the will of God for you, and you are prayed. Please stand your ground. And keep praying together. And explaining the case. Don't stop praying. Because those who are trying to force you into their own mold. They will not be the one in that marriage with you. I'm saying this because there's actually somebody here like that. So take note. Let me tell you a story. Two stories. Big lessons from either of them. A woman was going to get married, and finally her mother, who happened to be a prophetess, said, you know what, let's just get all the names of the people. And she went, she took those names to her fellow prophet, prophetess, and they prayed. And eventually they said, this person that you like is not your husband. This one is your husband from heaven. And they said, and then since the man was hanging around her, she gave the man a yes and left the guy that they both have correct synergy. Okay, because there's a religious way we have painted this thing. Like marriage is God trying to take away your joy. If it's too good, it can't be God. Says who? And they went on. The moment the man got the woman got pregnant, the man disappeared from the house. Never returned. Till when she gave birth. 
he will call her on phone, rain insult on her, abuse her, cut her to sizes. When she gave birth, he went there with his fellow drunkard. And right there, she was still in the world when he began to fight with her. And she carried her child. Are you saying you beat me with this child? Say, I will beat you with the child. And as he tried to slap her, he eats and eat the baby. And the child went into coma. That was the man they said God in heaven said she should marry. God is not wicked. It is people who misunderstand him and misrepresent him. Okay, you too pray. So prophet will not be the one selecting your husbands for you. Pray. It takes false Christians to raise false prophets because of spiritual laziness. That's the idea. The second one. When my friend told me this story, the father, the father is the prophet. So whenever I want to tell this story, he will say that my father destroyed the life of this man. <laughs> I say, ah, is that serious? Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> the woman, the man was going to get married, went to the prophet as usual. And so the prophet looked at all the names and said, this is your wife. You know that kind of audacity? <laughs> By in Yolu, are we? This is your wife. Thus says the Lord. And he went there. And he was never attracted to the woman. In fact, I, they, they could not consummate the marriage because he was not attracted to her. How can that be God? Tell your neighbor, pray to God. Let God lead you. As pastors, we counsel. We don't choose spouse for people. We what? Counsel. Have you prayed? What's God saying? Uh -huh. When we tell you to go and pray again, it means we are seeing something. If you are open, we'll tell you. Uh -huh. uh, even God that brought Eve to Adam, Adam said, the woman you gave me. Even God chop, blame me. Who am I? <laughs> God in heaven must say, eh, no, no, no. <laughs> Say, the, uh, did I ask for the woman? The woman you gave me, gave me the thing to eat. The woman said that the serpent gave me to eat. Blaming each other. Once you're a pastor, you start selecting wife for people. You know have rest till you die. Every problem they have, the woman you gave me, the wife you recommended, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> okay. So, I'm getting somewhere. From Genesis chapter number 2, we see that marriage is actually the oldest institution on earth. It is. Marriage is older than sin. Yes. Because sin had not yet entered the world when God instituted marriage. Marriage is even older than the church. Because the church had not yet been born. Unless from the foundations of the world, of course. And that's in the spirit. So, the quality of a marriage is determined by the quality of the individuals coming into it. Just like an omelette. Um, you cannot separate the health of the omelette from the health of the eggs. It is the quality of the people coming in that determines the quality of the marriage. No miracle takes place on your wedding day. It doesn't matter. Let the Pope of the world come to bless you. What you are marrying is what you get. And you build your own from there. So the beautiful thing is that there's no perfect person anywhere. Perfection looks true to the degree that you are far from a person. Proximity reveals what? Flaws. So when you are married, the fact that you are seeing your spouse will make you see things that those outside were not seeing. If you get those things wrong and hate your spouse and start liking somebody else, it is because you are, not pro you are not close to the person. That's why it looks like the moment you start a relationship with a person, okay, you start discovering that there are things you didn't see. Probably if you had known them, you would not have started the thing. Okay? And it's not greener on the other side. It's the same everywhere. One of the things marriage does is that it teaches us commitment. That I'm not looking for what is perfect. I'm ready to build with someone. Okay? But there's a level of what can be built. There are things you can't build. Let's put the balance. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
You can build a house when they grant. You can't build in the canal. Sometimes it will take your lifetime to first repair. So know what you have strength for. <laughs> know the kind of headache you are ready to have before you say, I do. So it is the quality of the people coming into the marriage that determines the quality of the marriage. And the quality of the people is determined by their preparation. How prepared are they? Some like the idea of marriage, but hate the reality of it. The idea of marriage is the pictures. The door on Snapchat. Look at us now, chilling with my babe. That's the idea. The matching outfit. Fantastic idea. Driving together, going to the beach and taking pictures, selfies, videos, uploading, preparing those online. <laughs> That's the idea. The colorful wedding, it's an idea. But the reality is commitment. Okay? And this is my advice. The moment you are married, never conclude that you didn't marry well. Just accept what you have. Are there deal breakers? Well, some other time we talk about that. Are you with me now? So, the person you are marrying, let me talk to the singles. What is the person's perspective about marriage? Because you have to talk. And one way not to talk is to start touching. Once you start touching, you won't talk. And you are going to marry a total stranger. So you want to have intelligent conversation. See, this emotions, emotions, let's put it aside first. I want to know you. Don't come close. You just want to hug every time. Then calm down. What are you bringing to the table? Who are you? How are you thinking? Get into conversation and observe. Observe the person's thought process. When you sit down to see a movie together, look at his reactions, a reaction. Ask yourself, is this person taking reference for life from movies or from scriptures? Is this person aligning with God? Does this fellow fear God? It's dangerous to marry somebody who doesn't fear God, who doesn't listen to anybody. When there is an issue, there's nobody on earth you can call and you know he will listen. You know, if God has given you a spouse that you can be sat down and talk to, he has blessed you. He has. All this idea of let me date you privately. Don't tell your pastor. <laughs> don't tell your pastor. You know, I don't do all this pastor, pastor thing. I don't do all this church, church thing. Say it's true, it's true. Let's just keep it. Wow. Amazing. Is it not amazing? It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it always ends in tears. Always. I said before you start a journey, check those who have gone ahead with the same method. If they are smiling, then continue. Unfortunately, people suffer, they suffer and smile. There must be someone on head that when the person calls, I need to talk to the both of you. You know you have the ears of the family. That's the idea of leadership. And it's not, it doesn't make you less to have somebody you listen to. It doesn't. doesn't make you less. It shows that you honor God's institution called the church. I understand people have many reasons why just want to come.